All right, so let's start making our player a little bit more interesting. We're going to animate him. We're going to get him moving around the screen. And fortunately, the, the physics engine that's written into this, this engine right now already handles things like collision detection, uh, checking the bounds to see if you should go to the next screen, all that stuff. It's already written into the code. So um, what we do want to do is, though, we want to animate him. And, and first of all, this is his standing state. I want to um, change the name of this. This is his uh, player... I'm just going to call it idle down, actually. Okay, idle down, rename. Um, it's okay, whatever you called it, as long as you sort of stay consistent. Um, it'll make your life easier. Okay, uh, I'm going to add on idle left, add idle right, add idle up, and I'm also going to add uh, run or walk or whatever you want to call it. Run down for each direction. Add run up. Add run left. And add run right. And I'm going to make each of these animations. Uh, I, I'm going to show you one of them and then skip ahead. Um, basically, uh, for my idle, for all of them, I'm going, so this is idle left, so I'm going to choose the one where he's standing to the left. For idle right, I'm going to do something clever. I'm going to copy his idle left frame and paste it into idle right and then flip the frame. And it's going to automatically do the, the appropriate flips and put the sprites in the right spot for that tile. And then for idle up, it's just him standing up like that. Um, now for run, this guy has four frame animation cycle each way. He basically swings one arm, then he's together, then he swings it the other way, then he's together. And this way, even sideways, uh, he's got one arm forward and then, you know, standing and then at back and then standing. So for run down, I'm going to start with his arm forward to the right like this. And what I need to do is I need to say how many frames of animation do I want? I want four frames of animation. And my second frame is going to be him standing still like this. Flip it and flip this. And then my frame three is really frame one flipped. So I'm going to copy frame one, go to frame three, paste it, flip it. And my frame four is really my frame two, copy, paste. Now we're gonna have a nice play button so you can see your animation looping. Right now you can kind of see left arms forward together, right arms forward together, okay? Um, and that's my run down. So I'm just gonna do the same thing for run up. So that's one arm swinging. Make sure it's four frames. Go to frame two together. Go to frame three. Frame three is the same as frame one, but uh, flipped. So copy, paste, flip. And then frame two and four are the same. So copy, paste. So now for run up, I get that. For frame, for run left, I am going to start with his left arm back like this. Tell it I want four frames of animation. Second frame is just him standing. Third frame, I can't copy and flip for this one. Uh, I want his, his arm forward here, his left arm forward. I like this animation too because he, he kind of bobs his head forward. Um, but four is the same as two so I can copy that and paste it here so now my left animation looks like that um, for the right animation it's I'm gonna copy it frame by frame and flip it so frame one I'm copying I'm moving to right I'm pasting I'm flipping I'm gonna tell it that I want four frames here I'm gonna go back to my left go to frame two I want to copy that I'm gonna go to on right frame two, 
paste it, flip it. Um, so I'm just going uh, animation, uh, frame by frame. Frame three, copy. Frame three, paste, flip. And finally, four, I'm going to copy and paste and flip. So now his right run looks like that so now i've got all of his his tiles laid out for his animation um and there's some things i need to do in order to determine when he should play each, each of the these animations i'm gonna go to object detail and right now i've only got one animation type even though i made two distinct animations um i i what i did well i've got these are this will play my distinct animation. So for instance, when he's idle, he's going to he's going to be facing down, he's going to be showing the idle down animation. When he's idle and he's right, he's going to be showing the right animation. So I've got to go through and tell it which ones of these that he should be playing. Let me change the name of this from default to idle or standing or something like that. And I know that first of all, down, right, left and up are easy to think about. So down is down right should be idle right up should be idle up and left should be idle left now the diagonals are a little bit trickier because i didn't i don't have any diagonal graphics for me if he's moving up it looks a lot more sensible for him to be facing up and moving sort of diagonal upwards um so anything that that's up is going to say up so idle up idle up and anything that says down is going to be idle down so down, down, and down. Um, so that's idle, but I also want a state for when he's walking. So I'm gonna add another animation type called walking or running or moving or whatever you wanna call it. And I'm gonna click on that one and now I'm gonna have to assign all these. So for down, run down. For down right, run down, same idea. Um, for right, run right. For upright, that's an up. So run up, run up, run up. Left is run left, and down is run down. So now I've got these two different types of animations, and I can assign these types of animations to different actions. Um, I'm going to skip detail for right now. No, in fact, I'm not going to skip detail. Um, a lot of this stuff you're not going to have to worry about for the player, especially. Um, we're not worried about hit points for this. We're not worried about experience points or strength or defense. None, none of this. In this game, you run into the bad guy, you run into the spikes, you die. That's it. Um, but I do need to give him a speed. So um, this is super fast. You probably don't want to go that fast. Uh, honestly, your player is going to probably be around 18, 20, somewhere in there, but you can mess around with this and find what you, what works for you. And depending on the type of game you're making, who knows? Um, acceleration speed. Do you want your character to like have a trot after and have inertia like in a Super Mario game or maybe like a spaceship that's flying that you want to have inertia or something that's on water? Or do you want it to kind of snap right to it like Zelda or an RPG or something like that? So that's that's really your call. I sometimes like to give it a little bit of inertia, and we're, but we can play with that to our taste. Next, we're going to go to actions. Now for the player, the player uh, for this current uh, for the codes that are written for this module here that we're messing with. Um, basically, his action step zero is his idle and his action step one is his walking. Now, that's just what we have set up. You can you can change that. You can make this anything you want. Um, and we're actually going to add an action step and, and to other objects and things like that so you can see how this would work. Um, but basically, for action step zero, if he's standing still, if, he's, if he hasn't started moving yet, he's going to show the animation type idle and there, none of this is relevant to the player, so we're just going to leave this off. Um, for one, he's going to show the animation type walking, and he's going to have an animation speed, and you're going to have to look and see what speed works best for you, like what do you like best. Um, and then lastly, we have to give him a bounding box. Now, when it comes to a bounding box, avoid going from corner to corner. Uh, I usually try and go center of mass and usually I'll honestly, this is my only bounding box. I'll leave it, um, lower because if you 
go back and play Zelda, it, you know, basically when I go up to a wall, this much of me leans over that wall. And if I, and I can pass in front of monsters and things like that. So depending on what you're going for, if you're going for straight RPG, it might be more like that. If you're going for more of a Zelda, it might be more like that. Um, right now, this engine doesn't have a, a priority based on depth. There's no depth system. So, um, you know, you might be better off giving him sort of the full height. The most important thing to do, though, is don't do this. Because if there's only a 16 pixel like uh, place for him to get into, you'll have it'll be almost impossible to get, have him get into there. That's why I always leave my bounding boxes more like this, and then there's some give on each side, and it, it sort of cheats for the player a little bit too. Um, let's go with that. Let's go with that, and then we can always adjust it if we want. Okay. So now we've given him animations, we've given him a speed, we've given him a bounding box. Uh, all we really have to do now is give him some code to make him utilize the uh, physics engine that we're currently using this engine. The best part, again, about this is you can later, you know, change the physics engine, create your own physics engine. Um, and I can and, and that's way beyond the scope of this tutorial. But uh, just to let you know, it's not a hard and fast physics engine where it can only do these things. Uh, you can code your own physics engine and how it uh, how it interacts with the, the, the tool. Uh, for us, though, we're going to go to code scripts like we did in the last step, and we are going to go to user scripts, movement scripts. And we're going to go ahead and pull all these in, all the movement scripts. We have uh, one for each press event and one for each release event for all the buttons. So in my input editor, I'm going to change my game state to main game. So in the main game, when I press, don't forget I can cycle through these, when I press, the right arrow key. I'm not worried about target. I have to set it. You could put it to player one if you want. It's not even reading this right now, and it's not reading this right now, and it's not reading this right now. The only thing is it's reading is this controller and what you're doing to that button, what state we're in, what game state we're in, and what script we should run. So when I press right in the main game, I want to uh, use the press right script. And if I look at the press right script, I'm going to add that. If I look at the press right script, Basically, it's it's this is what activates the physics engine. Our physics engine is going to read this byte, and each object has a byte uh, that this is basically working like a variable. And what it's reading is if this first value is a one, that means it's moving horizontally, and this determines whether it's moving left or right. If it's a zero, it's moving left. If it's a one, it's moving right. This bit determines whether it's moving up or down, and it's zero, so it's not moving up or down right now. Um, this is, uh, it, it's, if it's moving up and if it's a one, it's moving down. And these three bits right here are the direct, literally the direction that it should be facing in terms of the animation that it's showing. Uh, so that's what this does. It, it, ought, it pushes, um, the player object uh, to the index. And so it's doing this to the player object. And then it's going to change his object state to one. And remember, we looked at that action step there. And we said one would be him running. So we basically what we're doing is we're telling him, okay, whatever state you're in, if I press the button, change that state to one. Great. When I let go of right, it does a whole bunch of things. But basically, it undoes that it gets rid of it, it looks at the object byte and it keeps all this data, but it gets rid of this data. Whoops. It gets rid of me moving to the right. Um, and then also what it, this does a really kind of weird check. If I'm, if I release the right, but I am holding up, it won't jump back to idle. It'll only jump back to idle. This is jumping back to idle. If no, buttons are currently pressed. So um, that's how I can make them that this is what the, these scripts do. And you can see you can jump in and edit the code. And I know you won't know what to do with that code yet. But over time, you will. And that's how this is going to be super flexible, like unbelievably unendingly flexible, what we're going to be able to do uh, with Nest Maker uh, eventually. So um, I'm going to go back to my input editor. And I'm going to I'm going to do this for all my buttons. Uh, when I press down, uh, I am going to use the press down script. And again, it doesn't matter if you put player or null here. I, I, one of them has to be selected. When I release down, I'm going to use the release down script. When I press left, I'm going to use the press left script. When I release left, I'm going to use the release left script. 
when I press up, I'm going to use the press up script. When I release up, I'm going to use the, whoops, I accidentally put the release for up. So right click, remove it. Um, if I press up, I'm going to run the press up script. If I release it, I'm going to run the release up script. And I think that should be all of them. So I should have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, I'm missing something. Okay, if I press down, if I release down. If I press left, if I release left. If I press right, but I don't have the release for right. So if I release right, I want to show, I want to do the release right script. Okay, so now I've got press and release right press and release down, press and release left, and press and release up. And remember, what that's, our, what that's doing is what's in these code, what, what's in these scripts over here. Um, so if I change what these do, then that'll change what this does, what actually the buttons do. Uh, so I'm going to export and test, and now I should be able to move. And like I said, since this activates a physics engine rather than just moving him on the screen, just literally moving his position, um, it's going to observe things like acceleration, whatever I set the acceleration to. It's also going to observe things like collision detection. It's going to observe things like bounds checking if he gets to the edge of the screen. All that already works because this uh, works with the physics engine that's written. So I'm going to hit export and test. You know what? I don't think I put him on the right screen, so I'm going to close that. And oh, yeah, I did. I'm sorry. Yes, I did in the last step. So um, export and test. And here's my hello world. And there he is. And now I can move and I can observe collisions. He doesn't collide with that. In fact, if I go to the edge of the screen, I follow this trail to the edge of the screen. I'll go to the next screen that I drew. So isn't that cool? Um, Solid collision works and hurt collision. We're not going to deal with hurt collision yet, um, but he's moving way too slow for my taste. So I'm just going to go to the hero object, object details, details, and my max speed. I'm going to increase, well, I'll just about double that. So let's see what like 40, 40 in a little bit looks like. That feels more logical to me for this style of game, like a Zelda game. Um, just to show you what the acceleration is doing, it is actually accelerating a little bit, and I like that. I like having just a little bit of acceleration and just a little bit of trot after for this character. But let's pretend that I, I had a game that took place all on ice, right? The whole thing was on ice. I could set the acceleration to really low, like a really low number. And what that means is every step of the game, while it's getting to max speed, it's just increasing the acceleration by that little bit. So it's going to take forever to get to full speed like that. So, you know, and it's going to take forever to stop. He kind of slides like he's on ice. And this isn't a perfect uh, engine. There we go. So, you know, this isn't a perfect engine because uh, for ice, because if I press down all of a sudden he stops but there's there's definitely a better way to do ice but this you know it's it's kind of a cool feeling it's really obnoxious uh if, for those of you who wanted to make like an ice hockey like game here you go uh so anyway that's that's how i can get the player moving and i'm gonna <laughs> i'm definitely gonna put him back with his acceleration lower um so object details uh, details and move his acceleration back up okay um so that's the player the next thing we want to start talking about is uh is some objects so some monster objects so i'm going to save this i've been saving all along by the way and i'm going to say player move 